for those who fear him. As a mother comforts her child, so I will comfort you, says the Lord. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom. I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principality, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor death, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. We sing and praise to Almighty God in the service of thanksgiving for the life of Lloyd St. George Sentinel. The hymn, I lift my heart to thee, Savior divine, for thou art all to me, and I am thine. <laughs>
Let us pray. You may be seated. Eternal God, our Heavenly Father, you loved us with an everlasting love and can turn the shadow of death into the light of a new dawn. Help us now to wait upon you with reverent and submissive hearts. In the silence of this hour, speak to us of eternal things, that with patience and the comfort of your holy word, we may embrace and hold fast the blessed hope of eternal life, which you have given us in your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I want to extend a welcome to you as we join together in this service of thanksgiving for the life of Lloyd Fitzgeorge St. Hill. We extend condolences, of course, to his wife, to his children, to his family, even his brother who is here officiating with us this evening, nieces, nephews, and to those of you joining with us on the World Wide Web as we commemorate and celebrate the life of our brother Lloyd Fitzgeorge. I am Pastor David Ince, and with me, my senior pastor, the Reverend Rosling Hamling, who will be um, bringing us the sermon, and Reverend the Alban St. Hill, the brother of Brother Lloyd. At this time, I would invite a musical selection, a tribute. The organist, one that Brother Lloyd would have served with while he served on the choir, and our Brother Winston at this time will share with us as he gives a tribute to the life of our Brother Lloyd.
Amen. No more night. No more pain. And it is said that funeral services are more for the living than for the dead. The dead, those who have rested in the Lord, are at peace. And so may we find comfort from knowing that he is at peace in the arms of his Savior. As I said earlier, we are joined by persons online and remotely, and not everyone can be here for obvious reasons as it relates to COVID and those types of things. And so at this time, we'll hear from his daughter, Janice Rushworth, as she brings the eulogy for her father. And she is currently in England. Thank you all for coming today, especially during these strange and difficult times. All the family from England saw my father in August. In fact, we arrived on Sunday the 15th of August, his 94th birthday, but had to quarantine for a day and managed to see him on the 16th. We are so glad that we were able to spend those few weeks with him. His face would always light up when his great grandchild came to visit. I have a few fond memories I'd like to share with you. My father worked as a chemist for a sugar plantation before leaving for England in the 50s. He worked in England for many years and often talk about how he progressed to become an area manager in the post office. He was highly respected by his colleagues for his fair and professional way of working. We would smile when he started to say, when I was in the post office, one of my father's passions was cricket. He loved to watch it, play it, and talk about it. He would often tell us stories about matches he played and various cricketers he met along the way. He was a batsman and represented a local team in Barbados and also played for the county team of Warwickshire in England. He was very proud of his sporting achievements. My father has always been active. He and my mother will often walk from Gibbons to Miami Beach, which is a fair distance, and enjoy their sea baths, meeting old friends and making new ones. On one occasion when I was visiting, I saw my 87 year old father swimming to the shore to help his 90 year old friend back into the sea. He also used to climb up a ladder to pick the breadfruits something I wouldn't even attempt. We had to tell him that perhaps he shouldn't be doing that at his age. He was nearly 90. I'll miss his smile and our weekly chats on a Sunday. Brother Lloyd Fitzgeorge St. Hill, chemist, postal worker, avid cricketer, cricket lover, swimmer, husband, father, uncle, brother, friend. And so we hear now a tribute from Sister Desma, a tribute, she'll be reading, sorry, a tribute to my husband. And this is written by Sister Margaret and Sister Desma Linton will be reading it on her behalf. This too is a recording. Tribute to my husband, Lloyd St. Hill, written by Margaret St. Hill. We are but bubbles in a stream, soon to disappear, but we have a savior who is always near to put his arm around us, to shield us from the storm. In his word, he tells us, we'll never be alone. We need not boast of good deeds we've done in our lifetime. We are powerless without him. We can do nothing on our own. All the sins we have committed, he covered with his blood. At the cross of Calvary, he paid the price for you and me. To clear our name from guilt and shame, he's always at our side. 
onward, forward, now goes Lloyd to his heavenly home, there to meet with loved ones who have gone on before. Trusting, ever trusting, we shall meet again, standing on his promises. The Savior is his name. Savior is his name. Words penned by Sister Margaret St. Hill on behalf of her husband. We stand together and sing hymn 273, 273, All the Way My Savior Leads Me, 273. for a word of prayer as we commit any offerings that would have been brought on behalf of our brother as we commit to the upkeep of the church. Let us pray. A loving God and Heavenly Father, we do indeed thank you. Thank you, Lord God, for the gifts that you have given unto us. And as we come into your presence, Lord God, even at a time like this, we come, Lord, saying thank you for who you are and for what you have done and for the comfort that we can have in you that even in the midst of our mourning, we can still praise you because we know, Lord God, that you are still very much in control. And once we put our trust in you, you are faithful to be with us, never leaving us, never forsaking us. And so, Lord God, we lift up before you the offerings that would have been brought this morning for the furtherance of your work. We ask that you would bless them and continue to use us and them together as we seek, Lord, to proclaim your word and to praise your holy name. We ask all these things in Jesus' precious name. Amen.
Amen. And for those who may not be aware, the offering plate is by the door as we don't pass plates around anymore. At this time, we'll have our scripture reading, our scripture readings, I would say. The first reading comes from the Psalms, Psalm 90, and this will be read by a nephew of Brother Lloyd, that is, or Brother Glenn St. Hilt. He will read for us Psalm 90. Here begins the first lesson found in the book of Psalm, Psalm 90. Lord, thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever thou hast formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. Thou turnest man to destruction and sayest, Return, ye children of men. For a thousand years in thy sight are but as yesterday, then tis past, and as a watch in the night. Thou carriest them away as with a flood, they, as, they are as a sleep. In the morning they are like grass which groweth up. In the morning it flourisheth and groweth up. In the evening it is cut down and withereth. For we are consumed by thine anger, and by thy wrath are we troubled. Thou hast set our iniquities before thee, our secret sins in the light of thy countenance. For all our days are passed away in thy wrath. We spend our years as a tale that is told. The days of our years are threescore years and ten. And if by reason of strength there be fourscore years, Yet is their strength, labor, and sorrow, for it is soon cut off, and we fly away. Who knoweth the power of thine anger? Even according to thy fear, so is thy wrath. So teach us to number our days, that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Return, O Lord, how long? And let it repent thee concerning thy servants. O oh, satisfy us early with thy mercy, that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Make us glad according to the days wherein thou hast afflicted us, and the years wherein we have seen evil. Let thy work appear unto thy servants, and thy glory unto their children. And let the beauty of the Lord our God be upon us, and establish thou the work of our hands upon us. Yea, the work of our hands established though it. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. Amen. 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 Our second scripture reading, the New Testament reading, will be from the Gospel according to St. John, chapter 14, verses 1 through 6 and 27. And this will be read by a niece this time, Caroline Giles. The second reading is taken from John 14, verse 1 to 6 and 27. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And whither I go ye know, and the way ye know. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Peace, I, verse 27, peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. 
Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Here ends the second reading. Thanks be to God. We want to thank our readers for sharing with us from God's holy word. We stand together and sing hymn number 378 as we prepare to hear from God's messenger for this morning, our senior pastor, the Reverend Rosling Hamling. We sing together, when all my labors and trials are o'er, 378, after which you will hear from the Reverend Rosling. thank you for the glory that is revealed in Christ Jesus and which can be ours. Grant that this day as we reflect upon your word, we may hear afresh from you. That as we reflect upon the life of our dear brother, we may learn from his life. Grant, therefore, O Lord, that we may be strengthened for the days ahead of us, and especially may we learn how to grow in you. May, therefore, the words of my mouth 
and the thoughts of our hearts together. Find acceptance in thy sight, O thou our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. We read this morning from the Gospel according to John chapter 14. And uh, therein, Jesus presents himself as the way, the truth, the life. He had been telling his disciples of his impending departure, preparing them for what would follow. And... Uh, assuring them under the circumstances where his, word, his way seemed like no way, under such circumstances when any thought he would give of a way did not seem as though it was really a good way, where the truth seemed not to prevail, and when he was facing death rather than life. In the midst of this, he said to them, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I want to draw our attention particularly to the aspect of the way. And uh, checking on the definition we can consider the way to be the path taken or the means, the mode, the procedure for anywhere you want to go, anything you want to do. And of course, if you would want to arrive at a particular destination, you do have to have some sense of it. Now, what happened to me could very well happen to any of us. I was given the address and set out on my way saying, yes, I know where that is. I saw the sign last week or two weeks ago and set out merrily on my way but somehow, after I had passed the area I figure I should be making my turn off, I realized, but I'm still going. I don't see the sign, where's the road? I had to make full circle and look for other landmarks because somehow, between the last time I had passed that way and that particular day, the sign had fallen. And so I could have been going around and round in circles. But you see the importance of the signpost. And remember, our definition for way is path or procedure. As we reflect on Jesus saying to his disciples at this time, I am the way, it calls to mind another occasion when Jesus and his Disciples discussed the way. Again, he was focusing on his impending departure. And because of the strange things that he was saying to his followers, they started defecting. Now, if you are following a leader who is telling you, well, in a short while, I'm going to be dead, Somebody's going to kill. Not only am I going to be dead, so, you know, he doesn't fall sick and die, but somebody is going to kill me. How many of us are going to stick around? Because that looks like defeat already. And so his followers considered that he was heading for disaster. Therefore, they were going to get out ahead of it. And so one by one, they started defecting, going away, leaving him. 
This led Jesus to ask the question of his 12 disciples. Do you also wish to go away? Peter, the spokesman, as always, spoke up. Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. And I want to read for you that short portion from John chapter 6, verses 66 to 69, which outline this scenario. After this, many of his disciples drew back and no longer went about with him. Jesus said to the twelve, do you also wish to go away? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. And we have believed and have come to know that you are the Holy One of God. To whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. You have the answer. You have the way. Where else can we go? Peter's is a great statement of faith. In fact, it can be compared, it's quite similar in actual text, to his confession at Caesarea Philippi, when Jesus had asked the question, and who do you say that I am? Peter had responded on that occasion, thou art the Christ. Matthew 16, Mark 8, Luke 9, record this. And so when the disciples were asked this question on this occasion, Peter responded, there is no other way, Lord. Where else could we go? My friends, the question really is, how would you respond to Jesus Christ? Ask that question. Would you also go away to seek another way? Or do you have faith that Jesus Christ can indeed deliver? Do you begin looking to see who can read your palms? Or the stars? Or the tea leaves or something else to tell you what is to come next? Or do you have a faith that Jesus Christ can deliver. To Peter, the simple fact was that there was just no one else to go to. There was nowhere else to turn. There was no other way to follow. And Peter's loyalty was based on a personal relationship to Jesus Christ. There were many things he did not understand, could not understand. He was just as bewildered and puzzled as anyone else. But there was something about Jesus for which he would willingly give himself. In the final analysis, Christianity, my friends, is not a philosophy which we accept, nor a theory to which we give allegiance. It is a personal response to Jesus Christ. It is the allegiance and the love which a man gives because his heart will not allow him to do anything else. He realizes that nothing else will work or is worth it. What then does this Jesus offer in his way? 
I want to offer you three such things today. To say to you that Jesus Christ, as the way, offers peace. That you can have peace whilst the storms are raging. Everything may be in turmoil around you. Your workplace may be in turmoil. Your colleagues may be criticizing you and your boss pressuring you. Your family may be unsettled. There may be seemingly problems on every hand. But, my friends, Jesus Christ, the way, he offers peace to you. Hence, you can say with the songwriter, what a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to be all. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. And so there is peace to you through Jesus Christ, the way. That no matter what else is happening about you, I remember that peace is not simply the absence of turmoil, but it is the ability to remain calm even in the midst of the turmoil. And so Jesus Christ offers you this as the way, as your way. In the second place, he offers hope. For my friends, you can have hope when darkness looms. You may not be able to see your way right now. You may be looking and groping and thinking, I can't see what is the way out. I can't see the end of the road. And indeed, we can't. But guess what? We may not know about tomorrow, but we do know who holds tomorrow. And we can be confident that he will hold our hand. And so, my friends, rather than despair, rather than think that life seems to be without meaning, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, the psalmist says, thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Therefore, even in life's darkest hours, my friends, you can sing with the songwriter, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but boldly lean on Jesus' name, on Christ, the solid rock I stand. He is our hope. Let us put our hope, our trust in him. So even when the, dun the tunnel seems all dark, remember that Christ is our hope. The world will say there, there is um, a silver lining. The world will say maybe that there's a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. In Christ we say, he is our hope. On him, the solid rock, we can stand. And thirdly, Jesus Christ, the way, he offers joy. And so, my friend, you can have joy despite the outward circumstances. What you consider to, the wor to be the worst thing may have happened to you. Perhaps you've lost your job. Perhaps your investments went downhill. Perhaps your home has been damaged, whether by, by some disaster. But even though those outward circumstances 
are not looking rosy to the world. Yet, my friends, you can joy in the Lord because God's word tells us that the joy of the Lord is our strength. And so his joy can be your strength in these days. No matter what the outward circumstances may appear to be, remember, with Jesus Christ your way, there is joy. As the psalmist says, weeping may endure for the night, but joy cometh in the morning. And so our Savior, the way, offers us joy. He offers us peace. He offers us hope. He offers us joy. That is why Peter could say, where else could we go? To whom can we turn? You have the word of eternal life. What you hold will bring a brighter day for us. Through the love of God our Savior, all will be well. We expect a bright tomorrow, all will be well. And so my friends, I do believe that our brother Lloyd recognized that like Peter, he needed to say, where else can I turn? To who else can I turn? Only you have the word of eternal life. Only you can offer something that is lasting. Only Christ Jesus can offer what will take me through life. He recognized that he needed to have and to build his own personal relationship with his Lord. No loved ones relationship with Christ can do for, 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 us, for us or for what could have done for him. God has no grandchildren. We are all his children. So Brother Lloyd's parents, as, as strong Christians as they were, their relationship could not serve him. He had to have his own relationship with Jesus Christ. His brother's relationship, no matter how strong it was, could not serve him. His wife's relationship, no matter how precious it may have been, could not serve for him. He had to have his own. And he recognized that he could not turn for another way to the London transport where he served for some time. He could not turn to the post office system. That would not help him to find eternal life. Not even the pharmacy, and certainly not the cricket. He had to go through Christ the way. My friends, as you have noted, signposts are important to your destination. You are going on a journey, the signposts are important. And Jesus Christ is that signpost. He is the way. He is the one that we must follow. I say to you then, my friends, that even in these challenging times, amidst COVID-19 pandemic, Jesus Christ is still the way. He is still the hope of all who put their trust in him. He is still the peace for those who might seemingly be facing turmoil. He can still be the joy of those for whom the outward circumstances look gloomy. 
Jesus Christ is the way. And to you, as you sorrow today, as you mourn the passing of your loved one, to Sister Margaret, to, to Brother Alban, to Janice's daughter, to all other offspring and family members in Jesus Christ, you can find strength, you can find peace, you can find hope you can even find joy. Let the precious memories that you shared with your loved one be that source of joy to you as you reflect. Let his peaceful spirit illumine your way, inform how you live. Let the hope that he had in Christ Jesus be the same hope that you have in your Savior today. Jesus asks, will you also go away? My friends, are you going to look for another way? I trust that like Peter, you can see, there is nowhere else for me to go. There is no other way for me. I will stay with my Savior Come what me, for I know that he walks and holds my hand, and therefore he will bring me triumphantly through whatever circumstances I encounter. May God strengthen, comfort, and bless you all this day. May you be confident that your church family here at Bethlehem, stand in ready support of you. On behalf of their pastoral team, the officers, board members, and especially the choir where Brother Lloyd served diligently, I extend our condolences, reminding you that the eternal God is your refuge. And underneath you are his everlasting arms to hold you up, to bear you along the way. May you receive strength in him. And may he comfort you even as you mourn and you find peace amidst the turmoil. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, as we hear from you this day, may we truly receive and be able to go forth triumphant in what you offer to us. This we pray in the name of our Savior, who is our way. Amen. Exceptionally, I'd like to thank Sister Roz for all she's done for the St. Hill family. And I commend her sermon, her message to you, and trust that you will meditate upon it in the months, and perhaps if God should carry the years ahead. She mentioned hope, and only recently I came across a wonderful word written by somebody that I immediately forgot and didn't take the time to take the information, but the person wrote, hope, Sister Roz mentioned hope. Hope is the melody of the future and faith the music to dance to it. Hope is the melody of the future and faith 
the music to dance to it. Let us pray. Most holy and merciful God, the refuge and strength of those who put their trust in you, we thank you for the multitude no one can number, whom you have received into your eternal joy. We praise you that you have forgiven them all their sins and that they dwell with you beyond evil and sorrow forever. We thank you also for all to whom amid the trials of this mortal life, you give the faith that overcomes the world who have peace in you and rejoice in hope of your glory. We praise and bless your name for all who have departed this life in faith, and especially for our brother Lloyd, for all your kindness to him throughout his earthly life, we give you thanks. We thank you that for him, all sickness and sorrow are ended, and that death itself is past. Almighty God, may we, inspired by the example of your saints, run with patience the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, so that when this mortal life is ended, we may be gathered with those whom we have loved in the kingdom of your glory, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Father of mercies and God of all comfort, you make nothing in vain and love all that you have made. Look in tender mercy on your people in their loss. Enable them to find in you their refuge and their strength, a very present help in trouble. Sustain them and deliver them from bitterness, despair and doubt of your love. Comfort them in their sadness. Uphold them with your strong love. Help them to face the future without fear knowing that they and all whom they love are in your hands and that nothing in life, not even death itself, can separate any one of us from your love. O oh Lord, be near us to comfort and uphold us as we are led through the changes of time to the rest and blessedness of eternity. Make us to know that your people are precious in your sight and that they live forever more with you. As we thank you for our brother Lloyd, whose life we shared. May we trust you at this time of parting. O oh God, give us of your strength that we may take up our lives more bravely and seek to be more faithful in duty and more loving and helpful to others, following those who are no longer with us here on earth. And may we, in our own turn, Find in your great mercy the perfect and unending rest of God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Thank you. 